To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Well, we had another long night last night. I guess that's just part of the deal when you're living off grid and you're... I'll get into that in a little bit, but it was it was pretty bad and, and to be honest, we didn't have a great outcome either. I wanted to show you some of Carolyn's gardening plants uh, that she has started. Here she has three watermelon and what five tomatoes and she used these cans uh, just to recycle. And, and she is so big on recycling things, using things that you don't customarily use things on. Over here, she has peppers and cucumbers. Now, the cucumbers, we're giving up hope on. They're just not sprouting. So we figured the seeds have rotted already. Over here, she used toilet paper rolls. I've showed you that trick. She, you just cut off the toilet paper roll, and then you kind of fold the bottom like a, a box cap. You know how you inner fold a box. I'm really proud of this. I mean, it just seems like she just did this the other day and they just popped right up. So yeah, whatever happened here, maybe it got too cold, you know, one day sitting on the floor or something, who knows. But this window provides a lot of sun. The sun always comes up on this side and sets on this side, but we get a good amount of sun all day long. And then she started this outdoor thing. It's supposed to harden the plants, like a winter harvest hardening type of thing. So she has built these little greenhouses. Here she has cherry tomatoes. It's, she put them in these bottles, and what it's supposed to do is when you transplant them, you know, it's supposed to help with the temperature acclimation and, you know, more natural type of uh, sprouting. Whereas inside, it's a controlled condition. Out here, it's not contro controlled. So when you transplant them, there's less of a shock. I, I'm really impressed how much she has uh, been studying this. Of course, this is all an experiment. This may fail. And so she went and bought seeds from the Dollar Tree. So if it did fail, it wasn't a huge loss. It wasn't the heirloom seeds. Over here, she's done the same thing. A little Rubbermaid bin that she got from Walmart. She wished she had gotten a bigger one because she bought two of these blue trays in here. Now this is uh, peppers and turnips, I think. Don't quote me on that. Well on our way to getting a nice sized garden. Over here we got the coffee starting to percolate. <laughs> this is our kitchen out here. So last night was the first night we were able to sleep without the wood stove on. And so I've been getting up every two hours making sure the chickens are warm. And the way I do that is I put a water bottle, a hot water bottle in every two hours. And I, I, we got plenty of hot water because we have the on-demand water heater right here. And it uses propane not electric so we're limited on electric that's why we don't have a heat lamp now i got a lot of complaints you got to have a heat lamp got to have a heat lamp got to have a heat lamp that's not true you don't have to have a heat lamp i actually heard one person say uh, the chickens will not be very strong to be very weak if they don't have a heat lamp well that's not true either a heat lamp only provides heat it, it replaces the heat that the mother was supposed to provide. So the water bottle does that. Now, here's the thing about the heat lamp. Just the opposite of what the wise tail says. The wise tail says you gotta have a heat lamp or they're gonna be weakened. It's, uh, it's just the opposite. If you put a heat lamp in there all day long and all night long, you will weaken them. They won't grow a good immune system because they're not sleeping well at night. The, the light keeps waking them up. Now, like I said, last night was the first night we didn't have the wood stove on. So in here, it's 84 degrees right now with the wood stove on. Both windows are wide open. Well, that window isn't. This window is wide open here, trying to cool us off. <laughs> but it's, it's 50 degrees outside. So it's, it's hard to control the temperature in here with the wood stove. Wood stove, I got one piece of wood in it, and it's just, you know, all just as much fire as you can get out of it. At 11 o'clock, I guess Carolyn had to go to the bathroom or something, and she looked in on him, and she woke me up. Now, Carolyn doesn't say, hon, wake up. No, she says, there's dead chickens! <laughs> Scared me to death. Yeah, so we went in there, and there was two dead chickens. And I thought, my goodness, what happened? Did I, did I get the water bottle too hot? Uh, were they too cold? And, of course, all the other chickens are just comfortable and laying around the water bottle. They're all happy. So I couldn't imagine what happened to these two chickens. 
So I took them out, put them in a Walmart bag, tied them up so I could bury them today. But I thought before I go to bed, I better make sure there's no more dead ones in there. And sure enough, there was. We bought eight buff Orphingtons and they're all female. And then we bought four straight runs. We don't know what they are. They're, they could be male, they could be female, and they're, they're different breeds. One of them was black. So all the buff Orphingtons are yellowish. See how curious she is? Watching my finger. <laughs> so all the, the straight runs died. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm still accusing myself. So this morning I wake up and Carolyn says, there's one that's in there that's not doing well. It's breathing very hard, very labored breathing. Uh, keeps shaking his head, does this. Well, again, I'm still thinking it's got to be a temperature related thing. I've messed something up. So I held the chicken and I told Carolyn to get some egg yolk. We had a, a, a sick chicken when we first brought him home. And apparently if you give them egg yolk, they get better. So we gave him egg yolk, and that's a certain kind of disease. So we gave that chicken egg yolk and it did get better. So I told her to get egg yolk. Well, it was cold, you know, our eggs are in the refrigerator, so it was cold. So she was letting it warm up for a minute. So I'm holding it, keeping it warm. It's breathing got more labored and more labored. I mean, you could see it was taking deep breaths, but then all of a sudden it was trying to breathe through its mouth. Within minutes after that, it spasmed and passed away. Man, what is going on? Because this, that could not have been a temperature related thing. It just couldn't. It, it was a breathing problem. Well, no sooner did I get that one put into a, a Walmart bag. Kevin says there's another one. So now we're, you know, we lost three last night. We lost one this morning. And here's another one. Well, I mean, it's an epidemic. I mean, we've got a serious problem. I don't know what to do. So what we did was we took all the chickens and we put them down here. We do that every, every morning. Well, we took that one chicken out and we put it up here because we noticed the other chickens were picking on it, you know, it, and it wasn't defending itself. It was just not feeling well, but it was not breathing heavy yet. It just had that head shake. It just kept shaking its head and it wouldn't move around. So we brought it up here and we started researching what could it possibly be. One of the things this head shaking is, is a sore throat of some sort. So I told Carolyn, uh, let's get some water in it because it wasn't drinking water. So we hand fed water. We took a spoon, we'd open up its, its beak and we put little drips of water in it. And for a few seconds, it would seem to do better. And then it would start to feel bad again. And we'd do, do the cycle over. And finally, Carolyn said, well, maybe there's food stuck in its throat. You know, that can happen. They can get food stuck in their throat. Carolyn says it's called crop. After I fed it some water, she took it and rubbed its throat. And it seemed to do a lot better this time. And it just kept getting better and better. And finally started eating some food. Well, I was working on the chimney, on the stove, so I was outside. And Carolyn came out to see what I was doing, came back in, and that chicken was roosted up here. It, it was like completely better. She mixed it back in with the rest of the chickens. And now we can't even tell which chicken it is. They're all doing fine. They're all pecking around. They're all eating. She mixed up some wet food over here. And it looks like they're starting to peck at that a little bit. They don't seem to like that too much. But you can see they're all chasing each other and scratching and having a good time. So apparently we saved it. But that being said, we did lose four. And so what we think has happened was the straight run chickens had a disease and then it must have spread to one of the buff Orphingtons. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait a day or two, see if any more get sick. And if they don't, then we're going to go and get four more to replace what we've lost. Look at that. They love the paper. And the thing is, is if they get a piece of paper ripped off, then they pretend like they got a worm. And so all the other chickens chase her. Look how curious they are. Hey, look at me, I'm on camera. So we're gonna replace the ones that we lost. The problem is the ones we're gonna buy are gonna be much smaller than this one. So there's a whole procedure you gotta follow. You introduce them slowly and what we'll do is we'll take all the chickens out here and we'll kind of put them out here on the floor. We'll block off the floor, put down a, that, some newspaper because that is not considered territory. Chickens are very territorial and if you introduce a new chicken into their ter territory, then uh, they'll get defensive and they'll start picking on that little chicken. But if you do it over here where they're not accustomed to it, then everybody's new territory. 
and then you can bring them back in and then you just watch them for an hour or two to make sure that they're not picking on the little chicks and eventually they'll get used to each other so but we don't want to buy new chicks until we're pretty sure that whatever the problem was has went away we don't want to have a disease and then just keep spreading it to the next batch of chickens over and over again so we're going to wait and see if these these survive now earlier i was saying a lot of people said that you got to have a certain amount of heat i mean i've gotten all kinds of different information from from commenters one person says it's got to be 100 degrees it's in the instruction book all you got to do is read it when you buy your chickens when they're first born you want them at 90 degrees i think for the first week well these are about three weeks old and so every you know, week you drop the temperature 10 degrees. Well, that brings us down to 70 degrees. And you'll know when they're getting cold because they all huddle up together in one little spot. So I hope I can inspire you to keep at it with your dream. Thanks for watching.